Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Well, hello there. I know it's been a long time since I've done an episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, but here we are. I thought in today's episode I'd show you how to make a simple audio amplifier, and this is a kind of a video request, so, um, let's get to it. So I thought I'd start with the classic, simple, class A amplifier. Now, this circuit will effectively take a line input. You can connect, say, a CD player or a MP3 or a tape or something, whatever you like, to the input there. And it will amplify the sound enough to power a speaker and fill a room with sound. Now, the trouble is I wouldn't suggest that you try this because this particular amplifier is going to be constantly pushing power through the speaker so that's going to push the cone out a little bit, even when there's no nothing coming in here. So you're not going to get the full cone movement, and it will possibly shorten the life of the speaker, and you really just don't want that. So what's the solution? Use a transformer. Just an ordinary mains transformer, say about 30 ohms there and 8 ohms there, or whatever your speaker happens to be, and that'll work pretty much perfectly. Anyway, I'm going to take it a little bit further and add another transistor here. But I've built this circuit, so let's see how it's set up and um, let's hear a little demonstration. Now, sorry about the shaky image here, but um, here is the setup. I have a little board here with the um, two resistors and the first transistor and the potentiometer on it. Next along is the second transistor. And there's a transformer to filter out all that AC. Um, DC from the amplifier. I've got a meter to measure how much current is going through and a speaker and there's a really long wire connecting it to this cassette deck here which is going to be playing the audio during the demonstrations and I'm also using this to um, film the commentary at the moment. I mean record the commentary. So with that said let's stop this and um, demonstrate the amplifier because I'm going to be obviously we have to use this for the now. So, let's hear how this sounds. Unfortunately, there is some buzzing in the speaker, which I have absolutely no idea why it's doing that. It's running from a regulated supply, but anyway, let's hear how it sounds. Oh, let's make that sound a bit more. Okay, I apologize for that. Let's try it with some real music. Let's hear it play. Now turn the power off. To prove that it is this thing that's actually producing the sound. Now I'll adjust the bias. And for some reason there isn't any sound anymore. That's just the end of the song, I guess. So as you heard, it works pretty well, and as you could probably tell, when I underbiased it at the end, it was quite distorted. But please don't pester me asking what songs I've used, because I really just don't know. They were just songs I found on the tape. So, how does this circuit actually work? How does it take a weak signal here and put a much stronger signal into the speaker? Well, I thought I might as well go through this little bit by little bit. Um, First of all, we've got this little capacitor here, and what that does is stop any DC from the audio source getting into the amplifier, and it stops any DC from the amplifier getting back into the audio source, which is uh, quite important. 
These two resistors here are for biasing this first transistor, and I'll talk about what that is in just a minute. But before I go on, um, let's actually see how a transistor works. Okay, so here we have a couple of transistors and a couple of resistors. Now on a transistor you've got three pins, you've got your collector, your base and the emitter. And I know I've used conventional current flow here. If you want to flame me about that then feel free to do so, but that's easier to understand with conventional current flow. Now a transistor can be thought of like a resistor, and a lot of you know that a resistor with a small value is going to let, off, let a lot of current flowing through it, as you can see by the red arrows, than a resistor with a much larger resistance. In other words, it resists the flow of current. Anyway, with a transistor, when there's a little bit of voltage at the base, a little bit of current will be able to flow through it. And when there's a little more voltage at the base, a lot of current will be able to flow through it. And bear in mind, most transistors need about 0.7 volts for it to do anything. So anyway, back to the biasing. What this does is it puts a little bit of voltage onto the base of the transistor. Because transistors cannot work with AC, they only work with DC. And if you try to amplify an AC signal with a transistor, it's only going to amplify the top part of the wave. And as you can see here, that's what you'll get, a very distorted waveform. So, with a little bit of biasing, what that does is that shifts that AC audio waveform all the way into the positive region, where the transistor can do stuff with it, and what you get is a much larger DC waveform on the output. So what we, what we actually end up is, is with the AC audio input getting converted to DC and shifted up so the transistor can use it and we get a much bigger change of DC on this resistor here. So a little bit of change in voltage here makes a really big change in voltage on this resistor here. Then that is fed into this other transistor which just um, ups the current a little bit and that goes through the coil of the transformer and because the voltage is constantly changing that will produce a expanding and collapsing magnetic field which generates another magnetic field in the secondary transformer coil which gets fed to the speaker and it reproduces the sound. Now when you're biasing this you want to start with the potentiometer all the way down as low as it will go. Don't start it with it some way up because that's going to pull a lot of power through the amplifier and possibly blow it. So start it with the potentiometer on its lowest setting and then just simply turn it up until the sound is good and when you found that sweet spot you know you've got it biased properly. Now for those of you who want to know whether it will actually work without a transformer the answer is yes it will but I would advise you not to try this with anything more than 6 volts for the speaker's sake anyway. Now I'll play the tape And, as you can hear, it works and sounds okay. But, this is why it's not a good idea. Now watch the speaker cone as I cycle the power on and off. You can see that it moves a little bit, even though there's actually no audio going through it. So with the amplifier on and pushing the cone out, it's never going to get the full range of motion out of the speaker. Now I know what some of you are thinking, just put a capacitor between the speaker and the amplifier and the whole thing will be just fine. Well, actually that won't work. All that's going to happen is the capacitor will get charged and remain charged and you'll only get weak distorted audio, if anything. As you can hear, you might be able to hear there's just a faintest little bit of a crackling coming through the speaker. If I short out the capacitor... <coughs> So, why doesn't this work? Well, the answer to that is very simple. This transistor is going to charge this capacitor up to the peak voltage of whatever the circuit is doing. And as there is absolutely no path for this capacitor to discharge, it's just going to stay charged and block all the DC from the amplifier. And since the audio from the amplifier is DC, it will effectively block that. And you just won't get any sound out of the speaker. Maybe just a little tiny bit at the start as the capacitor charges up and then just a faint little crackling noise and that's pretty much all you'll get. So, 
What's the solution to this? Just add another transistor and a few extra parts and the problem is solved. And what we've effectively done here is change this from a class A amplifier into a class B amplifier, which is also known as a push-pull. And it's, as you can see, it's not much more complicated than the class A amplifier. The bases of these two transistors are connected via these two diodes here because you need a voltage drop between the two transistors or it's going to sound distorted. Also, this transistor needs to be negatively biased, so there's a resistor there to take care of that. And, as you can see, the two bases are connected together and then they go to the capacitor and the speaker. So, how does this circuit work? What does it actually do? Well, that's very simple. When the audio signal goes negative, this transistor starts to conduct and the current can flow through the transistor, then into the capacitor, then through the speaker, and as it charges up that capacitor, it pushes the speaker cone outwards. And when the audio signal goes positive, this transistor stops conducting and this one starts, so the capacitor can discharge itself through this transistor, and it pulls the speaker cone inwards. Hence the name push-pull. And here is that solution. You can see the other transistor I added. This time it's a PNP, but don't worry about what that means right now. As you can see, it's only pulling about 30 milliamps, so it's much more efficient. So, let's hear some music through it. Feel my arms around you Like sea around the shore um, let's just try to find some music that's a little bit less sappy than that. Um, let's see what's on the other side of this tape. Doors. It does need a little bit of adjustment. Riders of the storm. Riders of the storm Into this house we're born I better not play too much of that just in case I get caught for copyright. Now as you probably heard the sound wasn't the best quality, it was a little bit distorted because sometimes a couple of diodes just doesn't give you the voltage drop you're going to need. So the solution for that, add another transistor and a variable resistor. And what this circuit does here is it's effectively a diode where you can adjust the voltage drop. And as you can see, all it requires is two components. You've got your transistor here, variable resistor here. Now, it will conduct a little bit in the opposite way. There's no, no way to get around that, but that's not really going to be a problem in a circuit like this. So, um, let's build a rubber diode or adjustable diode or whatever you want to call it and give it a little test. I have my meter connected to the variable diode circuit and I'm measuring voltage drop and as you can see when I adjust the potentiometer it changes the, it changes the actual voltage drop. So time to put this into the circuit. Right well here we have the circuit with the variable diode put in I've tidied it up a little bit. Now I know the two output transistors look a bit different from each other, but they are an exact match. It's just that the PNP has a different case to the NPN, but they're both the uh, same. Both have got the same characteristics, so that shouldn't matter. I've got the amplifier's output connected up to the scope, so we can see what's going on there. And it's also connected to the speaker through this capacitor. So I'm going to turn it on and set it up, and then we'll hear some music through it. Firstly, I want to make sure the output voltage is half of the supply voltage. Now, I know that I'm powering this on 22 volts, so I want to make the output voltage of the amplifier 11 volts, which is about here on the scope. So let's just adjust that. Obviously, it would be better to use a meter for this, but um, I just can't be asked at the moment, so the scope will have to do. Anyway, now I'm going to play some music from the tape and... Let's see how this sounds. Okay, there we go, we can hear something. Now we just need to adjust that voltage drop between the two transistors. 
Because there's nowhere near enough voltage drop at the moment. There we go. Alright, let's put this on to AC. Change the thing here. One volt per division. Okay, you can barely see that. Right, I think that's working pretty good. I don't know if you could hear me very well over the thing. Uh, it was a little bit louder than I thought it would be. Anyway, I'm going to see exactly how loud this can go. So I'm going to put this onto 2 volts per division. At the moment, it's drawing about 58 milliamps quiescent current. And quiescent current is how much it's drawing without anything going into it. So I'm going to turn this on and um, crank it up till it pops. Well, I'm just going to turn it up till it starts clipping. Still good. That wants you to be on easy then, man. Eh? Still good. Because it ain't gonna do right, that you down. down. you but that was pretty loud and I don't know if you could hear me over the thing and it was probably overdriving the camera's microphone anyway I did adjust this to one volt per division so we got one when it went to just about there before it started clipping so we got one two three volts there one two three volts there so we got about six volts peak to peak out of that my camera battery's running out so I better wrap this up quickly so I think that's working pretty good now I just want to do one more little test Right, so I now have a 250 Hz sine wave being fed into the amplifier and I'm measuring the output on the scope and this is how the output is just before it starts to clip. I've also disconnected the speaker for obvious reasons and without the speaker connected the output voltage is a little bit more than what it is with the speaker connected. The load of the speaker is not dragging the voltage down anymore. But let's see what we've got. I'll just position this a little better so I can read it better. 2, 4, 6, 8. Almost 10 volts peak to peak. And with no load, that's just before it starts to clip. Now I'm going to turn it up. And as I turn up the amplitude, you can see it's starting to clip at the top there. As I turn it up, it's distorting even more. So you can see... Well, that pretty much speaks for itself. So I'll back that down again, so it's to the point where it isn't clipping anymore. And there we go. That's how to build a simple Class A or a simple Class AB push-pull amplifier. And I'm just about out of time and out of camera battery now, so I'll see you next time. I'll just leave you with one last message from the amplifier. Well, so that's just about it for this video. Remember, the success to electronics it's not studying books and calculating complex equations and stuff like that. The only truly way to be successful with electronics is experiment. And that's it for now, so till next time, goodbye.